What's fascinating about branding is that branding is about telling stories. And if we think about branding in relation to film, it's about telling stories about stories. And if we look at the Star Wars uh, franchise, what we can see is that the stories that take place within the film also are kind of mimicked around the franchise itself. So what we see is that George Lucas follows the hero's journey. So Lucas talks about Joseph Campbell, who wrote the hero's journey as being a mentor of his. And what Lucas did was fight against the establishment of Hollywood at the time as part of the new Hollywood generation. His first film was made with Francis Ford Coppola, who went on to make the very successful Godfather films. Uh, nobody cared about his first film. And then his second film, American Graffiti, did very, very well. And what always happens when you do a really successful film, both commercially and in terms of uh, fan success, is that Hollywood then opens the doors and allows you to make uh, your pet project. And for Lucas, his pet project was Star Wars. In a paper that I wrote with Dara O'Reilly from Sheffield University, we looked at uh, how each film can be considered as a brand. And then what happens is within that brand, you have different, different brands that fight for meaning. So we can have actor brands, director brand, uh, even a cinematographer. And then we have things like the, the storyline itself, the genre, etc. If we think about Star Wars, we can see that it was very, you know, the actor brands um, have done very well out of being part of Star Wars. So we've got Harrison Ford, uh, very famous um, for his debut in Star Wars and continuing with that franchise. And then later we had Ewan McGregor. We also had Carrie Fisher in her iconic role. And so they went on to have very positive associations after their casting in Star Wars. We saw um, how the brand extends. So we see that Harrison Ford went on to work again with um, George Lucas in the Indiana Jones films. And the fact that they made those Indiana Jones films impacted on what George Lucas wanted to do with the Star Wars brand. So he wanted to bring some of the success from Indiana Jones back into Star Wars. And that meant that his association with one of his collaborators ended at that point because they had a difference of agreement. So what we see from that are that brands change over time through association with other brands. So an actor in Star Wars will have a positive association and they can then bring on to future projects. George Lucas association with Star Wars can then have positive associations with other films uh, and so on. This idea that they change over time is quite interesting because we see that um, the franchise itself changed, it evolved. Uh, and what we saw was sometimes fans were very happy with that. Other times fans were unhappy with that. And all the while we had George Lucas as the kind of hero figure in that. And um, then there was a major shock to the franchise when he sold to Disney in 2012, because that was seen as giving up his creative freedom uh, that had been very valued as part of his story, his mythical kind of story as a filmmaker. But there was continuity in the brand at that point. So other research that I've done with uh, Dara O'Reilly and my colleague Chloe Priest from Royal Holloway has looked at how the James Bond franchise has, has been successful over time. And part of that has been the brand stewardship of the Broccoli family. And we can see a similar thing here with Kathleen Kennedy, who was part of Lucasfilm, continuing to run Lucasfilm when it was bought by Disney. So we see the brand continues, but it evolves over time. The other thing in terms of the brand changing and evolving is that we learn a lot about brand extension from looking at Star Wars. All kinds of characters um, come to life through the, the merchandise that have been produced for Star Wars. And that in itself sustained the Star Wars brand. So as is normal for an independent filmmaker, Lucas sold the rights to Star Wars to a distributor at the time the film was made and uh, walked away with, you know, not a lot of profit from the film, the success of the film, but he did retain the right to the merchandise. And this, uh, the money that he earned from the merchandise allowed him to finance the future Star Wars films. So what we see is that the brand extension relies heavily on fan loyalty. So the fans are deeply loyal. They want to connect with that brand and they show their connection through owning and sharing and collecting different uh, elements of franchise. So finally, the thing we learn for brands is about control and power. So we see that George Lucas was very much in control of the Star Wars brand as it started out. He was in charge of uh, the merchandise. He controlled licensing. He worked with Disney 
before he sold to them, he worked with them on developing rides for theme parks and really extending that brand. He was the creative um, mind behind the storytelling. And then at a certain point when he said he wanted to retire from it, he sold to Disney. So since the sale to Disney, we've seen a shift in power, but also some concern in the minds of the fans about Lucas being sidelined or not being sidelined, uh, but also concern in the minds of the fans that the franchise is going in the direction that they particularly wanted to go in. So uh, in summary, I would say that we can learn a huge amount by looking at branding and film in general, but particularly in Star Wars for mainstream brands, because what they have to uh, acknowledge is without a core product that makes people's lives better, that they get joy from, then there's no point really doing a, str a strong branding campaign. And that you can't necessarily know how people respond to your brand, but you have to allow some creative freedom for the consumers to engage with the brand. Do tune into the podcast to hear more about film, brands and Star Wars.